Hi everyone, I'm Sherry Boyles, Director of Admission at Meredith College in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I wanna thank you for spending time with us today. We're very excited about the opportunity to help you with your college search. I'm thrilled that you're giving us the opportunity to help you find your best fit school. Students and uh, parents, if you've joined your daughters tonight, we know that you've been on a bit of a roller coaster. The pandemic has put everyone on a bit of an emotional roller coaster. And uh, you, we recognize that you may be worried and concerned about your college search and finding your best fit school. Students and parents, I want you to understand this fact. Colleges want to help you find your best fit school just as much as you want to find your best fit school. So relax, don't worry so much. We're here for you, ready to be a resource to help you find that college experience that you've dreamed about, that you've researched, and uh, here to help you entirely through that process. You know, in fact, I was, uh, I was on a webinar today. There's been so much research done about you, seniors graduating in 2021, about what you're worried about most about your college search, what you're thinking about the application and financial aid process. So tonight, during this um, presentation, students, I do want to invite you to use the chat function, if you'd like, introduce yourself to our other attendees, and also, um, if you would type in that chat section, just tell us what it is you're worried about. We'd love to hear directly from you. We want to be a resource and help you get the information that you need. So with that said, um, we're going to have two presentations tonight. One about the application for admission, how you apply that process, and then also about how to apply for financial aid. Applying for admission. And so long as the, there we go. It's always nice when technology works like you're expecting it to. So students and parents, we, Meredith has three different application plans. They all have three different deadlines. Here's what you need to know. Our first application deadline is November 2nd. That is for our early decision plan. Students, if you apply early decision, we're going to notify you on or before November 15th about the decision we've, we're offering you on your application for admission. Our second application plan is early action. That application deadline is December 1st. We notify students with that decision on or before December 15th. We also have a regular decision plan, students. That priority date for submitting your application is February 15th, and we begin notifying students about that decision in mid-January. So students and parents, regardless of the schools that you apply to, they're going to have a variety of different application plans. Some schools have, um, early decision two, some students, or excuse me, some schools have early action one and early action two. It's very important throughout your college search that you pay really close attention to the different plans, the different application plans uh, that schools have. Of course, particular attention to the schools that you're interested in applying to. So three deadlines at Meredith, November 2nd for early decision, December 1st for early action and regular decision, that priority date is February 15th. So let's talk about early decision just for a moment. Sometimes people get early decision confused with early action. So I've got some Q and A's here that I wanna to mention to you to better describe early decision. Let's just start with the very basic. What is early decision? Is it different than early action? And the answer is yes. Early decision and early action are different, and here's how. Early decision is a binding agreement. Students, when you apply to a school early decision, here's what you're saying to them. You're saying, 
if you admit me, I'm coming. Early decision is a promise that you make to a school. On the application for admission, there'll be, if you're planning to apply early decision, there will be a place on the application where you will literally sign an agreement that you understand what early decision is. So again, it's a binding decision. It's a promise you're making to a school. If, you're, if that school admits you, you're attending. Early action, on the other hand, is non-binding. So the next obvious question then is, should I apply early decision? So if you're asking yourself that question, the answer could be yes, if you've completed all of your research, if you visited campus, maybe a virtual visit of campus, if you understand cost, and if you're certain that Meredith is your first choice, apply early decision. And remember, if you apply early decision, you're saying, I'm coming if I'm admitted. How about another question? Are there advantages to applying early decision? That's a question students always have. And the answer is, at some schools, there are advantages for applying early decision. At Meredith, the advantage to getting an early decision of admission from us is that your decision is made. No more worry, no more anxiety, and you are free to focus on the remainder of your senior year and finishing strong. Sometimes students and parents want to know if the merit scholarships are more or less valuable if you apply early decision. And the answer is no, not in Meredith. All students, regardless of your application plan, are considered for the same merit scholarships that we award at time of admission, regardless of your application plan. So, Early decision does not benefit you, nor does it negatively impact the merit scholarship that you would be awarded at time of admission, if of course admitted to the college. What if I'm admitted early decision, but my aid offer isn't enough for me to attend? Students, I want you to speak with your admission counselor and your financial aid counselor if that's a situation that you find yourself in. If the aid offer doesn't meet your demonstrated need, students, then you can be released from your ED commitment. We would love to have a conversation with you to ensure that you do understand your aid offer before um, your release from that ED commitment. But these are some really common questions about early decision. I hope those answers are helpful to you. So let's say you apply early decision to Meredith and you get admitted, yay! What are the next steps? So I've got some for you. Students admitted early decision are expected to withdraw all applications that you've submitted to other schools. Remember this, you can only apply to one school early decision. You can simultaneously apply to other schools through non-binding admission plans. So if you apply to Meredith early decision, and you have applied to other schools, maybe early action or regular decision. And if you're admitted to Meredith early decision, you are expected to withdraw all of those other applications that you've submitted to other schools. And that's, that's true for any school that you apply to early decision. Next step, make sure that you've submitted the FAFSA. We encourage all students to submit the FAFSA and Kevin Michelson is going to talk with you more about that process, but I do want to just um, remind you about the aid process for early decision because it happens pretty quickly. The FAFSA deadline for ED is November 10th and those aid offers are mailed on December 1st. International students, and I know we've had some students register for this event from Vietnam and Abu Dhabi and um, Saudi Arabia. Um, international and undocumented students, you should submit our institutional aid application and you can find that aid application on our financial aid website. The point here is if you apply early decision, apply for financial aid early, right? Next step you should take is sign and return your financial aid offer to the Office of Financial Assistance. And then finally, if you're planning to apply ED, the deposit deadline to reserve your space in the class is December 15th. 
So students, you would need to submit your $300 non-refundable deposit and your signed early decision agreement. And by the way, online is the easiest way to submit that um, enrollment deposit. I also just wanna mention, I know this is a lot of information. Um, if anyone would like this presentation after the webinar is over, I am more than happy to email that to you, so just let me know. So that was early decision. Let's talk about early action. The deadline's December 1st. Early action students, this enables you to apply early via non-binding application plans, okay? So you can apply to multiple schools via non-binding plans. If you're considering applying for our honors program, teaching fellows, service scholars, STEM scholars, or you're thinking about applying for a talent scholarship, I wanna encourage you to submit your application for admission, early action or early decision. Our early action decisions will be released on or before December 15th. Also, next step, be sure to submit the FAFSA. The priority date for early action submission of FAFSA is January 15th. And you too would need to sign and return your statement of award to the Office of Financial Assistance. Finally, students apply in early action. If you're admitted to the college, you would need to reserve your space in the class by submitting your $300 non-refundable deposit on or before National Reply Day, which is on May 1st. Our third application plan, remember, was regular, regular decision, and that priority deadline is February the 15th. We read applications and make those decisions on a rolling basis. We begin reading those applications in mid-January. We have approximately a three-week notification, students, after your application is complete. Admission decisions for applications received after February 15th are offered on a space available basis. And again, if you apply regular decision students, you need to reserve your space in the class by May 1st, which is known as National Reply Date. Let's talk about the application requirements. What do we require for admission at Meredith or for the application? So these are all of the documents and credentials students and parents that we will need before we actually read your application. The first, of course, is the application for admission, and that includes your essay. At Meredith, we accept two different applications, the Meredith application and the Common application. I had a question the other day from a student who was actually visiting campus, and they said, what is the Common application? Um, in a nutshell, the Common application is um, an organization that colleges and universities join. And you as the student, if you use the common application, you can actually apply to multiple schools with that one application. So go to the common application website. You may wanna create an account and add Meredith to your school list uh, and apply via the common application. Note, however, that most colleges and universities who accept the common application also have a member page. And um, there are specific questions that those schools will ask you via the common app. If you have questions about that, students be sure and chat with your admission counselor. The second application we require is a school transcript. Um, the third credential we um, have asked for in the past that has been a requirement is the SAT and the ACT score. Please note, this year we were happy to announce um, early last summer that Meredith is test optional due to inequities in test administration that were caused by the pandemic. So students, if you've taken a test or maybe you've taken the test multiple times and you feel the score represents your ability, submit the scores. If your access to the exams has been limited students, then submission of the scores is not required. Note this, the decision is yours. Whatever 
you choose to apply test optional or whether you apply to uh, submit a test score, you will not be penalized for the option that you choose. And also important to know that you must indicate your choice when you fill out the application for admission. You can learn more about test optional on our website. We've got an entire page that answers a lot of questions that you may be asking about test optional. Here are just three of them. What should I consider when deciding if I'll apply test optional? Maybe you're wondering if you can change your mind after you submit your application. Or what if you already sent your scores, but you want to apply test optional? Students, I would encourage you to go to our website and uh, go to our application requirements page and look up these answers to these test optional questions. There's great information there for you. The other application requirements um, include a school report. That is not your transcript students. This is a school official recommendation. It typically comes from your school counselor. It's a recommendation, quite honestly, from your school counselor. Students, you will request the school report while you're applying for admission, literally in the application for admission. Whether you are choosing the common application or the Meredith application, there will be a place for you to um, request the school official recommendation from your school counselor. So when you're applying for admission, when you're filling out the application, be sure to have your school counselor's name and email address handy. That'll make the whole process much easier for you students. We also invite you students to submit a recommendation from a high school teacher. That is not required, but it is encouraged. And if you would like to uh, submit additional recommendations, we welcome you to do that. If you're a homeschool student, we do require an interview with your admission counselor. Uh, be in contact with her about setting that up after you apply for admission. Also for homeschool students, we require two recommendations and one of those needs to come from a non-relative. And homeschool students, your parents uh, or your parent can complete that secondary school report that we also call a counselor report. What are we looking for in high school coursework? This is pretty straightforward. 16 total units, four in English, three in math. We prefer four, but three is required. Three units of science, three of social science, two units of a foreign language, and one academic elective. Maybe students, you have um, lots of credit that, that you are considering um, and you're wondering if Meredith will accept your credit. The answer is yes. We accept AP credit, IB credit. If you're duly enrolled, we accept dual enrollment credit. If you're concurrently enrolled, perhaps in high school in a local four-year school or community college, we accept that, that credit as well. Or maybe you attend early college high school or middle college. We also, of course, accept credit from um, that, that college that you're associated with. I do want to tell you, early college high school students and middle college students, you should apply as a first year student. You are not a transfer student. You will be a first year student. After all, your credit is um, figured and articulated your classification in college will change. It could be a freshman, sophomore, junior, based on the number of credits that you're bringing in. But you apply to college as a first year student, not a transfer student. Let's talk for a minute about what we learned from your transcript. Um, it is the most important credential in your application for admission. Your transcript, students, provides qualitative insight um, it gives us a snapshot of how you approach classroom studies. It helps us understand um, how you've taken advantage of the academic and experiential opportunities that your school has provided. So again, it gives us some qualitative insight into who you are as a student. Of course, your transcript always provides academic facts. We look at it for the total academic units that you completed. We look for your unweighted grade point average. If your school ranks, we'll look at your class rank. We also are looking for that academic rigor in the coursework you've chosen to complete, whether it's advanced placement, IB, honors. 
And we're also looking at grade trends across your high school years. So your, your transcript gives us a lot of insight into how you approach the classroom. What do we learn from your essay? It's incredible. Uh, your essay is really, really important, students, so be sure you're doing your best work. Your essay gives us a lot of insight into who you are as a, as a person. A lot of students will write about experiences that have helped shape who they are. And so again, we learn a lot about you. It helps us determine whether Meredith could be a great fit for you. We also learn a lot about your interest in the world around you. And our Meredith essay question actually helps us understand how much you've researched Meredith. And it helps us understand better your interest specifically in Meredith. And of course, your essay um, helps us assess your writing skills. Meredith is a writing intensive school across the curriculum. So your writing skills are very important be sure to do your best work on your essay. How do we actually make admission decisions at Meredith? We do what's called a holistic review. Students, we read every word on your application. Some schools do not, sorry to tell you that, they don't. We read every word on your application. We will read your essay very carefully. If you submit test scores, we're gonna review those. And what we're looking for are test scores that reflect college readiness. Again, your transcript is the most important academic credential that you send to us. We'll review it very carefully. Service, honors, and leadership, a resume, those will add value to your application. And students, recommendations can be quite important. Don't wait till the last minute to request those recommendations from your school counselor or from other teachers. They too can play an important role in um, in a decision for you. Parents, I want to mention to you, um, if you were to go to our website and just search for admissions blog, there is a blog post there that I wrote specifically with you in mind, parents. It's about holistic review. It's titled, how do, college how do colleges decide who gets in and who doesn't? So parents, you may want to take a look at that. But in a nutshell, what we're looking for when we're reading applications, we're looking for an application that demonstrates potential for success at Meredith and strong contributions to the Meredith community. Three decisions might be offered. One, of course, the obvious. Admit, we will mail you a nice, beautiful packet of admission and you will celebrate and that'll be awesome. We also may deliver a decision in which we're deferring a decision. So students, if, if we defer and ask you for a seventh semester transcript or a graded writing sample or perhaps an interview, that just means we need a little bit more information from you before we're able to offer a decision. The third decision we might offer is deny. Um, and for those of you who, um, for whom Meredith is really your goal, a no decision at time of admission may not always mean no forever. What we're encouraging you to do is go to a community college perhaps, establish a really strong academic record, and then apply to Meredith as a transfer student. I bet you're ready to talk about academic merit scholarships and tuition grants. I know everyone is concerned about paying for college, so let's talk about merit scholarships and tuition grants just for a moment. Our goal is to partner with you students and parents to help you fund this phenomenal education and experience at Meredith College. Our academic merit scholarship and tuition grant process is very straightforward and simple. No separate application is required. Merit scholarships are awarded at time of admission and they are renewable annually. Our impact scholarship is a $20,000 scholarship it is guaranteed so long as students, you have an 1100 SAT, 22 ACT, or because we're test optional this year, a 3.4 unweighted GPA. So either a minimum 1100 SAT or 22 ACT, or a 3.4 unweighted GPA, that means a $20,000 impact scholarship awarded at time of admission. Students, if you have exceptional academic credentials, 
you'll be considered for impact scholarship award amounts up to $23,000. Students who don't qualify for that impact scholarship are considered for tuition grants at time of admission. So it's very simple, very straightforward. Merit scholarships are awarded at time of admission, no separate application. We've got some scholars programs that I want to tell you about. Be sure you jot down January 15th as a really important deadline as well. January 15th is a deadline for honors, teaching fellows, service scholars, applications. Those, app those scholars programs require an interview. So they require the application by January 15th and they require an interview. If you're selected to interview for those programs, you'll be invited to interview at Scholars Day, February 20th, 2021. Your admission counselor will be able to give you a lot more information about those programs. We also have STEM scholarship. Um, the deadline for that is January 15th. We have two STEM programs, Austin Scholars and Pascal Scholars. Um, Austin is need and merit-based. Be sure you submit the FAFSA. Pascal Scholars is just merit-based. Austin requires an interview. Pascal does not. The Austin Scholar interview is a virtual interview, and those will occur in mid-February. For more information on these scholars programs, be sure to go to our financial aid website. Our two most prestigious um, and biggest scholarships um, are our Meredith Legacy and our Presidential Scholarships. You must apply to the Honors Program and of course qualify for the Honors Program to be eligible for these scholarships. If you are interested in either of these, we strongly encourage you to apply early decision or early action. And again, the students who are invited to interview for the Legacy and Presidential Scholarships are selected from the Honors Program applicants. If you apply for the Honors Program, and if you're selected to interview for the Legacy and Presidential Scholarships, you will be notified prior to Scholars Day, and you'll be invited to interview for those scholarships on Scholars Day, Sunday, February 20th, 2021. All right? Notification of those two scholarships is mid-March. We also have talent scholarships in art, interior design, music, and theater. Again, January 15th is the deadline to apply for those scholarships. You also must be majoring in these areas to receive a talent scholarship. You must interview or audition for these scholarships. Um, and those interviews and auditions also occur at Scholars Day, February 20th. So I would encourage you students, Jot down January 15th as a very important deadline for um, scholars and talent scholarship applications, and also save the date for Scholars Day, February 20th. And again, if you want more information, please go to our financial aid website. And then we have two other scholarships. Maybe you're a writer and you're interested in creative writing. Um, be sure to check that out also on our financial aid website. We also have a Thomas Meredith Baptist Heritage Scholarship. The deadline is also, you guessed it, January 15th. Neither of those um, scholarships require an interview. I recognize that was a ton of information in a very short period of time. Again, I'm happy to email this presentation to you, students or parents if you'd like to have it. Just reach out to us and let us know. Um, your admission counselor students is your absolute best resource uh, to get to know Meredith College. So be sure you get to know her. Um, I've got some questions that were uh, submitted prior to the uh, webinar beginning. I think we're going to hold off on answering those uh, after Mr. Michelson um, does his presentation on financial aid. So Kevin, I'm going to turn this over to you right now the screen is all yours great thank you very much sherry i appreciate all of that useful information and uh, let me go ahead and start to uh, share uh, my presentation as well
All right. So uh, again, uh, my name is Kevin Michelson. I'm Director of Financial Assistance here at Meredith. And uh, let me just uh, map out where we're headed with this presentation. Uh, we're going to, of course, talk about financial assistance. We're going to talk a little bit about and give you a, an overview of some of the financial aid programs that are out there from the various sources, as well as uh, applying for financial assistance, uh, what the process is, what you need to do, as well as the aid offer letter, uh, which is uh, the presentation of the actual uh, financial aid that we have to offer you. And then we'll also cover some other options and some other helpful tips and uh, helpful advice. So uh, before we get into the presentation, let's start first uh, with uh, what our costs are here at Meredith. Uh, as you may know, uh, uh, we are a private institution and to offer the many incredible programs uh, here at Meredith, uh, it does cost uh, money and resources. So uh, there is a cost to our education. Uh, but one thing that you may not know is that our tuition and fees is very much uh, among the averages uh, among the schools in our, our class. So uh, it is very uh, comparable to the other schools uh, that are, are private and that are in our class as well. Uh, the other thing that you may not know is that our room and board is very much uh, in line with many of the other schools in North Carolina. So uh, in terms of comparing cost, uh, you'll want to look at all options. But of course, uh, with uh, tuition and fees and the cost, uh, of course, that always lends itself to, uh, let's talk a little about financial aid. Uh, before I get, dive into that, I'm gonna sort of define what financial aid is. Uh, I simply define financial aid as any resource that helps a student or family offset the cost of a student's education. Uh, many times that comes into two forms or two different categories. Uh, the first is merit-based. Um, Sherry has mentioned some of the merit-based uh, 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 offerings here at Meredith, um, uh, but we're uh, also going to cover uh, at greater length uh, a little bit about the need-based category and, and what that all may, may, may mean. Uh, the first source of uh, federal or need-based uh, financial aid is from the federal government. Um, uh, these are some of the programs that are offered out there. Uh, let me first cover uh, a little bit of an overview of some of these programs. The first is the flagship program called the Federal Pell Grant. Uh, this is offered to uh, the most needy students. Uh, these uh, are grants, which simply mean uh, grants are money given to you where you don't have to pay them back. So you'll always want to acquire as many grants or scholarships as you can. Uh, but uh, uh, let me describe a little bit about uh, the maximum eligibility for the Pell Grant. Uh, you could qualify for up to $6,100 in the federal Pell Grant. Uh, so that is a great uh, program and it uh, is a great opportunity for many of our students. Uh, there is also a, another type of a grant program offered by the federal government called the Federal Supplemental Grant. Uh, this is a grant offered to students that do qualify for the Pell Grant. Uh, you can qualify for up to $4,000 each year in this particular program. Uh, this next program called the Federal Teach Grant uh, is a bit of a hybrid. It first starts out as a grant, but then it switches to another type of program uh, if you don't fulfill your obligation. Uh, the Federal Teach Grant, as by the name, uh, uh, you have to uh, uh, agree to teach uh, upon graduation. And uh, it is great for those that are seeking uh, teaching. Uh, you do have to teach into certain uh, actual program areas, and so uh, you need to make sure that you're a part of those programs, uh, and uh, you need to uh, serve in low-income uh, serving schools or teach in low-income serving schools. So uh, as long as you do that, then that uh, remains in a, as a grant and does not get converted into a loan. If uh, you do not fulfill your obligation, it does convert into a loan and then you would pay that over a course of 10 years. Uh, the next program is called the Federal Work Study Program. This is an opportunity for students to work on campus uh, in a particular job and uh, those resources could be used to offset your, your uh, cost. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to get involved in campus and uh, get an additional skill uh, and a number of our students participate in our federal work study program. Uh, 
also part of the federal programs is that uh, we, uh, as a, a VA uh, school, can offer uh, and participate in the VA benefit programs as part of military service, either from yourself or military services of your, uh, your, your close or immediate, your parents. Uh, and so we are a proud member of the Yellow Ribbon Program, and we do offer uh, and are a part of that program. My best advice for any of those that are, are seeking uh, VA benefits, please be in touch with uh, your VA or your local VA office. Uh, they will give you the best advice on the different programs that you show eligibility because it, many times it is dependent on when you enrolled in the military. Uh, the last uh, federal aid program I want to describe is what we would call the Federal Direct Student Loan. Uh, this is a, a subsidized loan, and subsidized just simply means uh, that your interest is subsidized while you're in school. So you don't pay any interest while you're attending school. Uh, but uh, it is an opportunity to take advantage of some of these resources. Um, as a freshman, you can borrow up to $3,500. Uh, as a sophomore, $4,500, and as a junior or senior, $5,500. So that's some of the federal programs. Uh, the other uh, possible resource of, of financial aid would be coming from uh, North Carolina. Uh, we have a number of uh, North Carolinian uh, programs uh, for those that uh, reside in this uh, great state. Uh, the first uh, program is called the North Carolina Need-Based Scholarship Program. Uh, this is based upon uh, the information that's included on the free application for federal student aid, which I will mention in a moment, uh, but you could qualify for up to $7,100 in this uh, scholarship program. And again, this is money that you don't have to pay back, so we would hope that you qualify for this. Another program offered by the North Carolina aid programs is the North Carolina Forgivable Education Loan for Service. Uh, a very much uh, akin to the federal TEACH program in that uh, you do have to agree to teach and agree to teach in a North Carolina school, uh, but you have the uh, opportunity to receive a grant um, uh, for participation in this program. As a uh, freshman or sophomore, you could qualify for up to $3,000, and as a junior and senior, up to $6,000. So it is a great opportunity for those that are seeking uh, a teaching uh, profession. The last program from North Carolina is the Golden Leaf Scholarship Program. Uh, this is a, a, a scholarship program, again, that you don't have to pay back, but it is offered to students that come from a tobacco-rich county uh, in North Carolina. So uh, it is a, a great opportunity. You'll need to go out to uh, the website to uh, check it out and see if you qualify for that. There is an application process for it, so it is, it is a fairly competitive, but you could qualify for up to $3,000 in this uh, program. There is also a, a component where you would be able to participate in a mentorship program as well. So it has a, a two-pronged program. So that is some of the North Carolina need-based uh, uh, aid programs. The last resource I'm going to cover is, of course, the, the programs that are offered through Meredith College. We have a number of need-based grant and scholarship programs that we offer to students. Uh, there are also a number of folks in our history that have given money and that have endowed uh, scholarships and grants that you may qualify for and uh, you may be able to receive those as part of the aid process. And then something to, to keep in mind as you progress through your time here at Meredith, you have the opportunity to qualify for departmental scholarships as you progress through your uh, major and program. So uh, there's some opportunity as you progress through here at Meredith. All right, here are some other options uh, that are not necessarily need-based, but I wanna at least uh, point them out for you. Uh, there is another federal program uh, called the Federal Direct Student Loans that are, is called unsubsidized. And this is a, a program that uh, lends money to students uh, that uh, you would be accruing interest on it while you're in school. You wouldn't need to pay on it until you graduate, but the interest would just accrue. Uh, you could qualify for up to uh, $6,000 as a first year student uh, and as a, a junior and senior, $5,000. So um, that is an, uh, a great resource, resource also for a number of our students. 
Uh, the other program uh, listed here is the Federal Direct Parent Plus Loan. Uh, this is a loan offered to uh, parents. Uh, they can borrow up to the cost of attendance minus any financial aid that you qualify for. So it is a great opportunity uh, to cover uh, a fair amount of, of ground uh, with the cost. And uh, it is a low interest loan and it is uh, something that they would pay back over a course of 10 years. Another uh, opportunity uh, for those that would like to participate in our private uh, loans through a lending uh, institution that are private. Uh, this is offered to students. Uh, many times it requires a co-signer, but it is an opportunity for students as well. Uh, the college, Meredith, uh, offers a number of uh, payment plans that you can pay over the course of the semester or the course of the year, and that's on a monthly basis. Uh, there is no interest charge to that, uh, but you can set that up and uh, we would highly recommend that you participate in that program. The other thing is that uh, there are outside scholarships out there that you could qualify based in your community or out in national organizations. Uh, I'm going to share in a moment uh, some tips on how to uh, look for those, but those are some opportunities that I want to make sure you're aware of. And then one last thing is that you could qualify for some uh, tax credits uh, for the following year after the first year of school uh, based on your income brackets. Um, and it is a great opportunity for you to start to think about and maybe uh, prompt your uh, accountant to make sure that they are well-versed in the, uh, the requirements for that. So that's some of the funding options. All right, so I've given you a lot of information about the various programs from different areas. Well, how do we access that? that, that that's probably what you're saying. Well, quite simply here at Meredith, all we ask that you do is apply for financial aid by completing the free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA form. Um, this is uh, something that you would do each year. Uh, you would complete it out at www.fafsa.gov. You would need uh, your 2019 federal income taxes uh, to complete the form. Uh, you will need to have both your parent and student uh, sign the form. And you do that by completing or using what we call an FSA ID. Uh, and uh, each, uh, both student and parent, uh, like I said, will need to have that. You will use that for all four years while you're at Meredith. Uh, so you'll just need to make sure you are aware of that and use it each year when you complete the form. Uh, you can register for it right now uh, if you would like, but my preference is that you would actually do it while you're completing the FAFSA form uh, right in the form. So it is all something that you can do while you're completing the FAFSA form. Uh, some other things about the FAFSA uh, is that uh, we get all this information electronically to an electronic mailbox. And in order for us to receive this information, we need for you to put our school code on the form. And our school code is 002945. Um, so make sure that you indicate that on the form. Uh, something to note after you've completed and submitted the form, you will receive a, a report back uh, that will allow you to uh, look over the results and make any corrections. That's what we would call a student aid report. So uh, make sure you uh, look to that and make any corrections after you've submitted the form. Uh, well, I think I mentioned this already, but I'll mention it again. Uh, you will need to fill out the FAFSA form each year that you're looking for financial aid. So. Uh, you will need to complete this each year. Uh, the uh, deadline, or not the deadline, the first time that you can complete the form is after October 1st. So that is coming right around the corner, uh, but you can complete it October 1st. Let me show you a couple things that they're going to ask or have questions on. Uh, uh, you'll see a list here of the different options that are going to be asked, uh, or not options, but uh, questions. Um, as you can tell, a number of them are coming directly from your taxes, so it is helpful if you have your taxes handy so that you can refer to them when you're completing the form. And as well as tax information, there is information about assets, number of family members, uh, and number of family members that are planning to attend school. So those are all crucial questions that are included on the FAFSA form. 
All right. So you have uh, completed the FAFSA form, submitted it, put our school code on there, and uh, we will receive those results. And uh, we will then review uh, your application, your free application for federal student aid uh, for the different aid programs that are available. So we will review and look at federal programs, state programs, and Meredith's programs and present you uh, what we call an aid offer letter. Uh, it presents all of the aid all in one spot for you to review and understand. Uh, it is only given to students that fill out the free application for federal student aid and are accepted to Meredith. So you need to make sure that you are also uh, completing your admissions requirements and completing that uh, in order for uh, you to see what aid is available to you. Uh, all the materials that we provide to you in uh, this aid offer will help you uh, get at a bottom line of what the bottom line cost will be at Meredith. Uh, there is a lot of information in this packet of information uh, and we have uh, specialists in our office that will help or assist you throughout the process. Um, all of our counselors are assigned to certain alphabetic groups uh, and so we will work with you uh, all four years uh, while here at Meredith and we will become very familiar with your financial background and we'll be able to provide you information uh, over the four years while you're here. Uh, we are very much here to help you. We know that the process can be a little complicated and there's a lot of information coming at you. So we wanna make sure that we can provide the best information and inform you on the decisions that you need to make. Uh, let me provide you with some uh, information about our actual calendar when you need to submit information. Uh, as Sherry has mentioned before, uh, she talked a little bit about the deadlines for uh, the uh, enrollment decisions. Uh, we have also some priority dates related to those decisions. So for those that are looking at early decision, will need to complete their FAFSA by the priority date of November 10th. Uh, and then you would receive what we call a statement of award or aid offer letter by December 1st. If you're looking at early action, uh, then uh, you would need to complete the FAFSA form by a priority date of January 15th, and then you would receive uh, the statement of award or aid offer uh, February 15th. Then there's the regular decision uh, 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 offering where we would require that you complete the uh, FAFSA priority date by February 15th, and then you would receive notification about your aid uh, after March 15th. Some other steps that you need to be aware of uh, going through the financial aid process is that we would want you to review uh, the information contained in the aid offer letter. We need for you to return this and send it back and let us know what aid you're planning to accept and use. If you are a North Carolina student, we want you to uh, complete the residency requirement uh, if you qualify for the North Carolina need-based scholarship. Uh, please, when we reach out to you, uh, complete uh, all the necessary paperwork or requirements uh, that we request. Uh, we, we hope that we can receive it in a timely manner so that we can provide you with timely information and you can make some decisions. If you are looking at borrowing uh, any type of loan, uh, our recommendation is for you to do that early summer um, and we'll provide you some uh, information about how to do that uh, when we uh, send out the aid offer. Uh, the same would be true for applying for a payment plan. You would wanna do that as well in early summer uh, to get things uh, in order for uh, the fall uh, billing cycle. Uh, just to make you aware of when we uh, process um, our, our semesters, I um, mean, our billing cycle is based upon our semesters. So our first bill is uh, available or uh, out there uh, July, but it is due then in August. Uh, and the same would be true for the spring semester. Uh, we would uh, present a, uh, a bill in December and that would be due, due uh, around January 1st. So that is a bit of the, the financial assistance cal calendar. Uh, let me provide you with some helpful tips. Uh, my recommendation for those parents out there and for the students, uh, 
you are actually filling out the free application for student aid, uh, for student aid, the student is actually completing the form. So please involve the student in the process. Uh, I know the parents have a tendency to overtake this process a, a bit. Uh, so please, if, if I can put out a, a bit of advice, please have uh, the parents really uh, seek out and uh, make sure that they involve the student in the process. Um, my recommendation in re re relation to outside scholarships, uh, please, uh, you can start searching for them now. Uh, I would recommend that you start to uh, compile a list uh, that you have uh, the best opportunity to qualify for scholarships. I tend to, to recommend that you look locally uh, because you might have the, that would probably be the, 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 the scholarships that you could be the most competitive with. Um, but make a list, start to hone that list, and then uh, uh, narrow that list down and go ahead and apply. Um, for those that are looking at scholarships, it's a good idea to uh, compile your resume and to submit that with the materials that they request. Uh, it's just a helpful uh, one sheet or two sheet uh, uh, thing for the organization to see who you are and, and, and be able to represent yourself on uh, 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 a couple sheets of paper. Uh, a couple warnings uh, is that please don't pay for scholarship searches. There are plenty of opportunities for you to find scholarships uh, without having to pay any additional money. There are plenty of free searches out there. Uh, I would recommend that you just do some uh, searches. Also consult uh, any of your high school counselors. And we do have also some links uh, that I'm gonna present to you in a moment. Uh, that are recommended scholarship searches. Uh, the other thing is don't pay to complete the FAFSA. It is a free document. It is a free form. So please uh, don't pay for uh, to pay the free application for federal student aid. Uh, I know it can be a little intimidating, uh, but it, it, they, they have improved this uh, form and uh, we are here to help you through the process. There is a great 800 number that you can use that is uh, often open until eight o'clock in the evening that you can connect with and they are a great resource as well as our office uh, to help you complete that form. Uh, with all things in the financial aid area, we would uh, make sure, I would recommend that you be mindful of deadlines uh, and requirements and things like that. So it is uh, uh, advised that you start to compile the de different deadlines that you need to submit things for. The last thing I want to recommend, uh, and this is a, a I'm going to describe a, a process that you may be offered uh, while you're completing the free application for federal student aid, and that is what we would call the IRS data retrieval tool. Uh, this is a way to simplify uh, the process of submitting information on the FAFSA. Uh, it quite simply will pull your information from your taxes and drop it right into the free application for federal student aid. If you're offered that opportunity, uh, it will uh, eliminate uh, a number of steps that you will need to take uh, and it will be uh, will make or ensure that your information is accurate in the form. So if you're ever given the opportunity to uh, take a part of the uh, IRS data retrieval, please go ahead and, and take advantage of that. All right. Uh, we are uh, very excited for you to have you look at Meredith. Uh, we are very excited to work with you throughout the financial aid process. Uh, we uh, have access to a number of different programs. In fact, we coordinated over $55 million in financial assistance last year. So uh, we are here to help you and we want you to reach out to us and talk with us and uh, we want to guide you throughout the whole process. Here are some additional information, uh, some websites, uh, as well as uh, great resources for those that are of North Carolina or from North Carolina. That is the College Foundation of North Carolina. Uh, the, uh, the scholarship search engine that we prefer is FastWeb. Uh, they have some great resources out there. And then for those that are uh, more interested or want some more information about the financial aid process, uh, we would recommend that you go out to uh, uh, an organizational site called finaid.org. And there's some great tools out there, some great resources to explain financial aid at greater depth. Uh, and uh, that is some resources out there. And I too will offer this uh, financial aid presentation uh, to anyone that requests it. 
um, and uh, I will work with the admissions folks to make sure that it's available to you if you need it. So uh, I hope that information was helpful for you. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to uh, Sherry, and I think we have a um, maybe a, a possibility of uh, to answer a few questions as well. Okay, wow, students, we know that was a ton of information that we have just presented to you, students and parents. Um, so, Jordan, um, Jordan is here. Jordan, would you tell the students where they can find this presentation? The presentation will be posted on the virtual experience page. Um, and I've sent a link out for the virtual experience page in the chat function. So I'll send that back out again. Um, and if you have trouble accessing the recording, certainly reach out to your admissions counselor. I'll also put in the chat again, the link to the Find Your Admissions Counselor page. Thank you, Jordan. And all the people I promised I would email the presentation to, we'll make sure that happens. There were three primary questions that were asked over and over again. So I know we're past, we're two minutes over, but I wanna take just a moment. Um, the first one was, where can you get the presentation? We have answered that one. The second one is a question about our impact scholarship. The impact scholarship is awarded at time of admission. There is no separate application. We use the credentials you submit with your application to award that scholarship. If you have a minimum 1100 SAT or 22 ACT, or a 3.4 unweighted GPA, you will be awarded a $20,000 impact scholarship at time of admission. That impact scholarship will be awarded to you for four years. So while you're a student at Meredith, it's renewable every year for four years. Students who have exceptional qualifications, so academic qualifications beyond that 1100 SAT, 22 ACT, or beyond that 3.4 unweighted GPA, those students will be considered for impact scholarship award amounts up to $23,000. So again, the impact scholarship, it's awarded at time of admission, if you meet those minimum criteria, and it's renewable for four years. There was another question asked um, that was submitted ahead of time. The question was, can you use scholarships that you earn at one school? Can you use those scholarships at another? Kevin, you want to answer that question? Sure. Uh, the uh, scholarships that you would earn at the various schools are generally not transferable. Uh, I have not yet heard of one, uh, but there are uh, the opportunities if you have received a scholarship at an outside organization, like an outside scholarship, that can be transferable to Meredith. But for those schools that offer their own scholarships, those would likely not be transferable to uh, each different school. Thank you, Kevin. Um, a question was also asked, what if you're not able to submit the FAFSA? What if you don't qualify to submit the FAFSA? So, oh. if, you, so if you're not a US citizen, for example, if you're an international student, or if you're an undocumented student living in the US or abroad, you will qualify for our merit scholarships and you should submit Meredith's institutional aid application. All right? That's right. Um, I think we are now four minutes over and people have lots of important things to do. So students and parents, thank you for joining us for this um, webinar. Hope you found the information very helpful. Students, one of the most important things I can say to you is get to know your admission counselor. She will help you through this entire process. She will help you navigate the entire application process. She'll be able to connect you with financial aid counselors who can help you through the aid process. So students, parents, thanks again. We look forward to helping you with your college search. Reach out to us anytime. We can't wait to get to know you even better. Thank you. Thank you.